Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I can also try to stay closer to here. Thank you. So, um, I will essentially tell you about some classical topic in algebraic geometry on understanding the geometry of particular types of moduli spaces, uh, of surfaces. And while the problem to understand the geometry of such spaces, a priori, has nothing to do in its formulation about mirror symmetry. The way we solved this problem actually goes through mirror symmetry of three folds. And I will tell you how this works. So to solve this problem in algebraic geometry, we developed a framework mathematically to understand mirror symmetry for non-toric, non-compact Calabria three folds. And uh, this is what we did in our recent paper together with Valeria Alexiev and Pierrick Fousseau, which you can find on archive. We finished a couple of months ago. And um, as we did this, we noticed that the mirror symmetry framework we developed to solve this question on algebraic geometry actually enables us to solve another open question in physics, which is related to 5D superconformal field theories. And this is what we are currently writing up with in work with Pyrrhic, and this will be the topic of the talk of Pyrrhic tomorrow. So I will just tell you what question is related to about this physics side briefly. And Pierrick will talk more about that. So here's the plan of my talk. I will tell you what are the KSP modular spaces of Kolar, Shefford, Byrne, and Alexiev. In the toric setup, I will review the non results of modular spaces of such toric surfaces. And I will explain it by using mirror symmetry, how these can be understood by looking at toric mirror symmetry for Calabia three folds. And then I will tell you what are KSB moduli spaces in the non-toric setup, moduli spaces of so-called local labial surfaces. And I will tell, be, tell you how we mathematically understand mirror symmetry for non-toric in the non-toric setup and how we use it to understand these spaces. So the main result of the talk is going to be the KSB moduli spaces of these non-toric so-called local labial surfaces is going to be a uh, up to a finite cover, a toric variety. And at the very end, I will elaborate uh, how this is related to 5D superconformal field theories. Okay, to start with moduli spaces. So, one of the most extensively studied moduli spaces in algebraic geometry is known as the Deline Mumford moduli space of stable curves, MRGN. So it's this space, it's the base uh, where you, every point corresponds to a stable curve, which is the data of a reduced curve of arithmetic genus G, which is at first nodal singularities, together with a bunch of points on it, P1 to Pn, which you can use to impose a stability condition, which uh, requires the automorphism group of this curve to get over this point to be finite. Mathematically, this is equivalent to saying that the uh, uh, canonical divisor given by the sum of the canonical divisor to get over these points should be ample. And this moduli space is extensively studied. It's a nice mathematical space. The Lee Manfred showed that it's a DM stack uh, of dimension 3G minus 3 plus N. And over the last 30 years, Kolar, Shefford, Byrne, and Alexia have developed a theory to study um, generalizations of these moduli spaces parameterizing not curves, but higher dimensional algebraic varieties. So there are spaces like this, uh, MKSV, the KSV moduli space, also known as the KSV moduli space of stable pairs, its points correspond to pairs by B, where Y is any projective variety of any dimension, and B is the device in Y. Analogous C to curves, you want a pair to have particular types of singularities, which we call semi log canonical singularities, coming from extensively studied in the context of minimal model programming maps. So you can think of these as higher dimensional analogs of nodal singularities. 
And again, there's the stability condition analogously requiring the sum of the canonical device and B to be Q Cartesian ample. So this is a space to have a picture whose points correspond to such varieties together with some devices in them. Due to the fact that, though, uh, as you can see, uh, SLC singularities are significantly more complicated than nodes, in particular the deformation theory of a node is a lot easier than the deformation theory of the singularities due to this fact we actually have the issue that the connected components of the modular space here, while it is a daily Manford stack, unlike in the previous case, it's not generally irreducible. So for people working in this area, the general goal is to describe particularly reducible components of this modular space and to tell what is the geometry of irreducible components. I will do this in the toric setup. I will tell you this first in the toric setup if you look at toric varieties, so this is the geometry. So to do this, I want to first review a few facts about toric varieties. So these are varieties you can obtain purely combinatorially. If you start with a lattice point of P in Rn, uh, you can naturally associate it a polarized projective toric variety Y, which is the approach of a monoid algebra where you obtain by CP, I do not the monoids of integral points in the cone of a B. And there's a natural toric boundary divisor, which is the anti canonical divisor given by the union of torus fixed divisors, which I denote by D. And uh, also associated to the status polytope, there is an ample line bundle which defines you the polarization so that the uh, sections of this ample line bundle admit a nice toric monomial basis, which, I, uh, which are indexed, which I denote by Z to P, the basis elements, which are indexed by integral points in the lattice polytope P. So here's an example of P2, so associated to the strangle of the lattice polytop with its anti-canonical polarization R3. If you chop off a triangle of a normalized area one, it amounts to doing a blob of P2, doing a toric blob. If you chop off five small triangles, you will obtain this pink lattice polytop I will keep as a running example, which amounts to blowing up P2 at five points, so it's a double surface of degree four. However, the five points you blow up are not in general position. You will create some minus two curves, and if you contract them, you will obtain a toric variety, which actually is a singular double surface of degree four. And again, as it is a matter of fact in toric geometry, whenever you have only one integral interior point, the polarization is the anti-canonical polarization. Okay, so what is the case B moduli space in the toric setup uh, associated to such a toric data, toric variety Y, D, and L? You look at all stable pairs, Y, D plus epsilon C, where your Y is a fixed toric variety, D is a toric boundary device, uh, epsilon is a small number, and you vary all your curves C such that C is a curve in the linear system of L. Uh, if you're in dimension two, and generally it's a hypersurface in the linear system of L. So in the description of the case B modular space, I said you look at all modular space of stable pairs. There were two conditions such pairs needed to satisfy. For B, I'm taking D plus epsilon C. So I want this to have SLC singularities, and I want the B plus the canonical device to be ample. If I take B, D plus epsilon C, because D is anti-canonical, if I sum up with the canonical device, I will just be left with epsilon C. It's automatically ample. And one can check the SLC condition amounts to saying I want my curve C to be torically transverse. So one can check for some sufficiently small epsilon uh, the sphere of y d plus epsilon c is stable is exactly saying that c is historically transverse in the sense that it doesn't pass through 
zero-dimensional strata of your toric boundary. In this context, around 20 years ago, Valery Alexiev proved that if you look at this moduli space, then uh, the normalization of this moduli space is a toric variety, and uh, the associated toric fan for this toric variety is a secondary fan for the momentum polytop of this toric variety. And I will briefly recall what the secondary fan is. For details, it's also known as the GKZ fan, GKZ fan, defined by Gaffan Kapranov Zelevinsky. Um, so here's a picture of it. If you look at this lattice polytope for our DP4, the secondary fan um, corresponds to the fan of P2 that I drew here. It's the fan whose maximal counts are in correspondence with regular triangulations of your polytop. So here, you can triangulate your diamond-shaped polytop this way or that way or that way, and each regular triangulation by regular, I do mean it's compatible with a piecewise senior function, so the regions you see here you can be told of, uh, uh, of the domains of linearity of a PL function, and if you look at all such regular triangulations, they're encoded in the secondary polytope. Sorry, secondary fan. Okay, so what Wallerich's result is saying, if you look at the historic variety, DP4, corresponding to this diamond shape, the case B moduli space is the toric variety whose fan is the fan for P2. So the case B moduli space is P2. Okay, so what we want to do is to understand the case B moduli space in the non-toric setup. Before that, I want to make a few, say a few words about why, even in the toric setup, the case B moduli space is toric, why there is a torus inside it to um, illustrate Valerie's statement. So if you consider all curves in, or all divisors in general in a toric variety in the linear system of L, um, being in the linear system of L means they're defined by some equations with variables of the form Z to B, your toric monomial basis. And if you assume that the coefficients are all elements of C star, uh, so if they are defined by some AP Z to P is zero, where APs are in C star, then you can check that all curves are actually elements of the case B moduli space, because as long as their coefficients are in C star, they will be torically transverse. So these curves, all these curves uh, naturally form a torus, C star, where you just vary coefficients APs, you have as many APs as the number of integral points in P, up to some reparameterizations and scaling, you will obtain a torus C star to the number of integral points minus the dimension of Y minus one. So the case B modular space naturally does contain the torus and the toric setup, and what you want to see is, how can you compactify it in a nice modular way so that the boundary also parameterizes stable objects of similar type? And what Valery claimed and proved is the correct things to add are degenerate surfaces. So each of these pictures triangulations do define you the data of a toric degeneration of your Y so that um, each of these triangles which correspond to P2s or weighted P2s uh, form the central fiber. You view them as the polytops uh, for the irreducible components of the central fiber of your toric degeneration. And what we showed is if you keep track of how your curves degenerate under such toric degenerations of your toric variety, use some properties of your toric monomial basis to investigate that all curves actually if they're torically transverse, they again degenerate to torically transverse curves. So this way he concluded by using the nice properties of the toric monomial basis that actually the correct right compactification is indeed given by um, looking at the secondary fan and this moduli space is um, the toric variety corresponding to the secondary fan. So what we want to do is to obtain a similar result in the non-toric setup, um, where we no more have the data of a secondary fan because we no more have a toric polytop. So 
What we first observed is actually there's a, a natural alternative interpretation of the KSP modular space in mathematics as the complex modular space of a threefold. And I will tell you what that is. If you look at this threefold C, given by the equation uv equals f of xy uh, for some Lorentz polynomial f, um, then you can look at the neat one point up of f, which naturally defines the toric variety as you mentioned. And if you look at the fn conic bundle of uh, y minus t, where y is your toric variety, the is your toric boundary divisor, so y minus t is just a big torus in your toric variety. If you look at the fine conic bundle whose fibers are just C stars away from the curve defined by the equation f equals zero, and over the curve the fibers are uv equals f, this defines the threefold. And um, as they explain in our paper, um, if you look at the complex modular space of this threefold, it amounts to varying the coefficients of f, but it amounts to looking at all possible curves, so you can naturally compactify this curve, looking at all possible curves in the linear system of L. So you do can interpret the KSB modular space as this complex modular space of this threefold C. And then here mirror symmetry comes into play and it suggests that this complex modular of complex structures on Z should be the same thing as the complexified moduli, Kähler moduli space of whatever the mirror of C is. And by a piece of notation, we often say not the mirror of C, but the mirror family to YDL, because C is naturally associated to the state of toric variety. And um, just some words, if you're a physicist and the physics language this curves here, is often called the sub quitten curve for the 4D n equals 2 theory obtained by compactifying type 2B string theory on Z. Okay, so here uh, in the toric setup, we do can understand mirror symmetry rather combinatorially in an easy way. So if you want to tell what the mirror to Z is, which I denote by X bar, or the mirror family to YDL, uh, you, very symmetry here is rather combinatorial in the sense that your Y was having this polytop, associated polytop, and I want to be, I want to be mirror symmetry as the duality between the fan and polytop pictures. So to construct a mirror to Z, I will take the cone over the polytop of Y and I will want to weave it now as the fan of the mirror. So if you take the cone over the polytop of Y, you will obtain a singular toric variety X bar whose fan is this, and this will be the mirror to Z in this toric setup. However, as usual in mirror symmetry, we do not want to consider only the mirror to Z, we want to consider to maximal degeneration, the mirror to a maximal degeneration, and this will be obtained by taking all possible crepant resolutions. In this case, I have only one crepant resolution, which gives me the smooth variety X, which is a projective crepant resolution over X bar, which I declare to be the mirror to Z. In this case, it's a canonical bundle of P1 times P1. Okay, so just to recall the expectation from mirror symmetry was that the KSB moduli space should be a toric variety whose toric fun should be given by all the Kähler cones of all possible crepant resolutions. And algebraic geometry, a Kähler cone is the same as an ample cone whose closure we call a nef cone, which is the cone of um, non-negative uh, cone of left devices, which have non-negative intersections with effective curve classes. And um, you can ask if you consider all possible crepant resolutions of your singular toric variety X bar, if you consider all possible nef counts, will they form a toric fan? And it was shown some years ago by Jean Kiel, if you have a nice space, what he calls the Mori dream space, then you can naturally define a complete toric fan, and I will tell you more about this soon. 
Um, and this one is called the Morifan, whose maximal cones are all nev cones of all possible Crepont resolutions, together with some additional cones, which he calls bogus cones. They are bogus in the sense that if you do understand the birational geometry of all Crepont resolutions, you can tell what these cones are that you need to add to obtain a complete toric fan. So in our example here, if you look at our toric variety, remember I drew the secondary fan P2, which correspond to all uh, triangulations. The data of these triangulations, apart from defining the durations of Y, combinatorially do define a second thing. So, Namely, if you take the cones of these polytops, you obtain, on one side, you obtain your uh, X, which is the smooth projective Crippon resolution. If you take the cones of the other triangulations, you will obtain some varieties with some arbifold singularities, but they're all related to your X by some divisorial contractions. So, um, here, um, when you just take the NEVCON of your Crepon resolution, you will obtain A2. But if you know all possible divisorial contractions on X, which amount to here in this case, um, there are two divisorial contractions. You can contract a P1 cross P1, which will give you X prime, or another P1 cross P1, which will give you this X prime prime. And such divisorial contractions uh, means you're going to the boundary of the nefcon of X, and then uh, you can describe a bogus cone by adding a ray corresponding to generated by whatever divisor you contracted. So knowing all divisorial contractions of all possible Crepon resolutions allows you to describe some additional bogus cones and to obtain a complete fan. And um, it's a result of uh, people working in a minimal model program, namely Birka, Kashini, Haik, and McKernan, if you have a Crepon resolution of a canonical singularity, you can always describe this Mori fan. There are always a, a Mori dream space which allows you to do this. And um, the secondary fan is exactly equal to the Mori fan of the mirror, as in this example, they are both P2. So in particular, what Valerie proved in the toric setup by describing the KSB modular space as a toric variety corresponding to the secondary fan is actually justifying a prediction coming from mirror symmetry, namely, it's the toric variety whose fan can be described by considering analogs of all Kähler cones. Um, so it's the toric variety with fan, the Mori fan of the mirror. We will use this interpretation because we want to obtain a similar result in the non-toric setup. There is no more uh, notion of a secondary fan, but we will define uh, analog a generalized secondary fan in the non-toric setup as the Mori fan of the mirror. After we describe what it does to what it does mean to uh, have the mirror, after we describe what the mirror in the non-toric setup is. So the non toric setup I want to look at is the setup of local area, of, local area of surfaces. So here I will fix YDL, which is a polarized local area of surface, given by a projective surface Y, which is not toric necessarily, and an anti-canonical device, the DNY, which is reduced, and um, Generally, people call local ABL surfaces when we are smooth, we are a little more flexible, we want to impose the uh, particular singularities to spare. Um, if you assume we is smooth and these normal crossing, they fit into this um, situation. In general, we impose the pair of ID to have so-called low-canonical singularities. And L is again an ample line model on Y. And furthermore, we assume that uh, Yd is maximal, which by definition means D should be non-empty, so we don't look like K3 surfaces, for instance. 
and T should have at least zero dimensional strata. So we don't consider situations like P2 and the smooth elliptic curve. So D should be singular. So there are infinitely many such surfaces. So particularly any toric variety together with the toric boundary device is a local labial surface, but there are infinitely many more such surfaces you can blow up any number of points on the toric boundary device to obtain, and you can look at the strict transform of your toric boundary device to define D. So the pair whose total space is a blow up together with the strict transform of the toric boundary will give you a local labial surface. And associated to such surfaces is a natural generalization of what the toric momentum polytope is, known as the Symington polytope. So if you're a symplectic geometer, you want to view the toric momentum polytope of a toric variety as the base of a torus vibration, like the strangle. You can view it as the base of a vibration on P2, where the general fiber any, of any point in the interior of the triangle is a torus. A Symington polytope associated to a non-toric local labial surface like this, where you obtain as a blob, is an integral mani a fine manifold with singularities. So if you do a non-toric blob, say on this uh, side corresponding to a divisor, then you chop off a triangle and you glue the remaining sides of the triangle. So this way you obtain an integral fine manifold where the Invariant monodromy direction I just drew as this line which is parallel to the edge uh, where you blow up. So again, um, all an interior point, you can realize your uh, fiber as a torus where over this tip of the triangle you get a degenerate fiber. Other examples of local labial manifolds, apart from doing this uh, non-toric blobs on torque, to toric manifolds, there are other ways to construct such local labial surfaces. So in this situation, we will call the toric surface we started with a toric mono, and um, you can obtain a local labial surface by starting with a toric model and doing non-toric blobs. But another way to obtain them is just to start with a toric pair given by a toric variety together with its toric boundary device, and then to destroy the toric boundary device. So in P2, your toric boundary device will be a union of three lines. And if you say smooth uh, one corner, one line, uh, one intersection point of these uh, lines, you can consider P2 together with an anti-canonical device given by the union of a line and conic. And this will again define a local ABR pair. There's again an associated Symington polytop uh, where you have one singularity again with monodromy invariant direction that I drew as in the figure. So you can imagine uh, smoothing this corner on the toric boundary. And um, the fact that there is always such a picture is related to the fact that there is always a toric model. And the situation where you just blow up a toric variety is easy. It's just a toric variety you start with the toric model. But cross-hacking Kiel showed that any local labial surface has a toric model. Namely, it can be obtained as a blow up of a toric surface um, at smooth points on the toric boundary up to some technical details. So you may not always have enough minus one curves to contract in your local labial to get a toric variety but up to doing some corner blow-ups, you can always do that. So up to some corner blow-ups, which means the zero-dimensional strata of D, if you blow, blow that up, uh, you can always obtain your local labial surface as a blow-up of something toric. In this example above, your toric model is P112. I claim if you start with P112 and if you do a non-toric blow up on one side, which amounts to chopping off this white triangle, then you get um, what I drew in the picture, but uh, you push in a singularity with monodromy invariant direction parallel to that edge. So you always have a toric model and an associated Symington polytop, which realizes the, the base of a normal toric vibration on your, on your local labial surface. 
And um, thank you. Related is the fact that you can, again, consider this picture here. And the torque set up by minus t was just a torus. Here, again, as shown by gross hacking keel, um, the complement will not be a torus, but a cluster variety. So up to co-dimension two locus, you can cover it with many tori. And you can, again, just consider this a fine uh, conic bundle of uh, uh, your cyborg fitting curve. And you can ask, how can we describe the mirror to Z, which we did easily in the toric setup combinatorially? Um, now, what is the mirror to Z and what is the worry fun? So, I will tell you this after providing the definition of the KSP modular space in this setup, MK, MYDL here. Uh, similarly, as in the toric setup, is, uh, is the locus of stable pairs yd plus epsilon c, where c is a curve varying in the c is any curve in the linear system of L. And um, in the toric setup, there was no complex moduli of yd. Here, depending on, here you can move the points you blow up in your toric model. So here, in addition, you have, a you look at deformation equivalent pairs to yd plus epsilon c. And we claim this moduli space is still toric. Again, um, the two conditions of being a stable pair, the second is automatically satisfied, and again, C needs to be transverse, it, doesn't need, it shouldn't pass through zero-dimensional strata of D to have a stable pair. And we do prove in our work with Valerie and Pyrrhic that this moduli space of all polarized subcalabial surfaces up to a finite color is a toric variety. So, um, in the toric setup, you can sort of believe it should be a toric variety when you start with a toric variety. It's something already combinatorial. The moduli space, you can combinatorially show that it's again a toric variety. In this setup, what you start with is a polarized socolabial surface, which is not toric. Um, and so it's a surprising result that you end up with the moduli space, which you show is still none of the less toric. And this is a conjecture of hacking kill you. It was conjectured first by Kiel that it should be a toric variety around 2005, and hacking Kiel, you made this conjecture more precise uh, by saying there should be a generalized secondary fan. And uh, known cases where this conjecture was proven by, apart from toric varieties, just six dot surfaces of degree n, uh, where you fix your anti-canonical boundary to um, where you fix the pair by D, where uh, D is uh, and many minus one curves. In these situations, the Symix and Poetop again has only one interior integral point and they are all self mirror and the sunset the dimension of the complex and scalar moduli spaces are the same. So there is not really much mirror symmetry going on. So we prove this conjecture for all, pos all possible dipital surfaces. And I will tell you how the proof goes. Um, so here is the strategy of the proof. So we start with the maximal degeneration of YDL. Similarly, as in the toric setup, we want to understand mirror symmetry. We want to construct a projective Crepon resolution, x over x bar, bar over one dimensional uh, space. And um, we call this the semi-stable mirror construction. The so far known mirror constructions um, in the maps literature um, did not cover this case because there were, there's the gross hacking keel mirror symmetry for local labial surfaces would tell you how to construct a mirror of a single local labial, but not to, to a maximal degeneration of it. And, um, more generally, gross seabed would tell you how to construct mirrors to maximal degenerations of colobial surfaces under the assumption that they are log smooth. But in the case B moduli space, such maximal degenerations we consider are not satisfying this assumption. 
And then there are some non-Archimedean approaches to understand mirror symmetry under the assumption that the complement phi minus t is affine due to Q and Hue, which again does not work here. So we developed this framework of semi-stable mirror construction, and I will tell you how we do that. And then once we obtain the mirror x over x bar, we show you get a Mori dream space, and in this case, you do can apply the gross Siebert mirror symmetry. You can associate, you can construct a Mori fan once you know it's a Mori dream space. And using the intrinsic mirror symmetry of gross Siebert, you can construct a mirror family. So we construct a mirror discrepant resolution and we look at the double mirror where this way is now by applying tools of gross Siebert to construct a double mirror family of a toric variety whose fun is the secondary fun. And then we show that this family, the double mirror family, is a case space stable family, and furthermore, the general fiber is the formation equivalent to what you started originally. So this way, we show that the toric variety M sec corresponding to the Mori fun of the mirror we construct uh, those parameters, case space stable pairs, in good situations, it is the case space moduli space due to some technical issues. Sometimes it is just a finite cover of the case space moduli space. Okay, so here's an overview of how we construct a mirror. We start with the maximal degeneration of YDL, our polar subcolabial surface. It's a degeneration of it into a union of copies of P2s. We show you can obtain such a degeneration by considering a regular triangulation of your associated cymics and polytop. Similarly, as in the toric setup, here all triangles will correspond to P2s forming your central fiber. And let me explain um, a version of Legendre duality. So we want to view this picture, the strangulation of the Symington polytope as the intersection complex of your degeneration of Y. Our mirror symmetry suggests it should be the dual intersection complex of your mirror degeneration. So we want to construct a normal crossing surface first whose dual intersection complex looks like this, x0. And then we want to smooth this normal crossing surface to obtain our mirror. Um, family. So the hard part is starting from a surface, starting from a triangulation to first construct a normal crossing surface and then to um, whose dual intersection complex is this, or if we describe some sort of duality whose intersection complex will be obtained by taking the toric dual and pushing on singularities. And um, then we want to smooth it. So we start with a nice cymix and polytop, which makes life easy for us due to Engel Friedman, um, who say that there, you can always obtain a cymix and polytop associated to any local labial surface by starting with a toric polytop where there's a central point, and the triangles you chop off from your toric polytop are um, on the sides like here, and our first result, result is rather combinatorial. We show you can always uh, describe a triangulation on such cymix and polytops, which define a maximal degeneration of YDL. And such that like this triangulation describes the intersection complex of Y0, the central fiber, which we want to view as the dual intersection complex of a normal crossing surface X0. So let me construct this normal crossing surface to each vertex here. If you look at the fan, they will define the toric variety, which give irreducible components of your normal crossing surface. If they're on the boundary, they will be non-complete toric varieties. If you're at the tip of a triangle you cut off, we need to do some deformation theory uh, to describe those components. Okay. And then once we had this normal crossing surface, like here, as in the example of P2 with a line and conic, this left-hand side is the intersection complex, the Symington polytop of Y. If you describe the dual, I just take the toric dual and I just push in a singularity from the 
edge corresponding to where I did an ontoric blow up. So your intersection complex will be, you, so you forget that edge. And that part here um, will give you a copy of A2. This will give you a copy of A2 on the right hand side and you will get another copy of P1 times A1. So your, so your X0 normal crossing surface is the union of these where the P1 cross A1 has a destroyed toric boundary, non-toric boundary. Once you have this normal crossing surface, um, we do some deformation theory. This is the technical part. We show you can glue all these components, irreducible components, in a way you can apply log smooth deformation theory to describe a smoothing, a semi-stable smoothing, such that X0 sits inside the total space as a normal crossing device, huh? and so that the total space is projective with a trivial canonical bundle. And furthermore, we show there's a contraction from X to some singular variety, uh, which has um, canonical singularities. So in particular, we reduce by this construction, we obtain a Mori dream space. And now we can construct the associated Mori fan, and the claim will be the corresponding toric variety associated to the Mori fan of the total space will be the case, B, will parameterize the case space stable pairs. So, step two is to, to recall so, once we have this mirror, as a second step, once we construct the associated Mori fan to the mirror we construct, we want to construct a family of a toric variety by taking the gross C but double mirror. It will be the topic of uh, Mark Gross, the second mirror here. Um, gross and C but show that whenever you have such a nice family, um, like our semi-stable mirror, you can associate to it um, family given by the approach of what they call the algebra of theta functions. So it's the approach of an algebra where coefficients are in a, living in a formal scheme, uh, formal, um, formal power series uh, with uh, variables, elements of the uh, Mori cone, which is the cone of effective curve classes. And theta p is a gross Hebert theta function, so unlike in the toric case, we do not have a monomial of basis of sections of this mirror, but we can define a basis of theta functions which generate sections of a natural line model on this mirror. There are gross Hebert theta functions and the structure constants uh, are described using an emirative geometry. Again, I will leave it to Mark to tell more about this construction. Due to Abramovich and gross but there's a log Ramau, punctured log Ramau written theory, which tells you how to describe the structure in this algebra. So here there are some subtleties to apply this construction, which works for projective families to our setup. So we generalize this a little bit and then one key point is we show that there are some convergence properties, so you don't only have this approach over some formal ring, but you get a very family over toric varieties, spec C and EX. And we do this for all possible Crippant resolutions, X, uh, but we don't only want to get the mirror, we also want the mirror together with the divisor and the curve to talk about stable pairs. So we show if you look at all theta functions by taking points corresponding to points in the interior of the cone of your Symington polytope, this will define an ideal, so you will get a natural divisor in your Y. And there's a natural line bundle um, where you can define again a curve in the linear system of this line bundle. So we consider this tuples and we run the intrinsic mirror construction for all possible Crepant resolutions. And we glue all these mirrors, y, d plus epsilon c together, eventually to describe a mirror family over the toric variety. And the gluing argument here uses uh, recent work of Mark Gross gluing formulas in punctured log Gramovitan theory. 
where similar arguments can be found also in the current ongoing work of cross hacking QLZ. But. And at the step three, we show that the Smira family, the key technical heart is to show the double Mira family is case based stable. And uh, furthermore, the general fiber is the formation equivalent to what you started with. Um, so let me see how much time has remained. Okay. So showing, thank you, showing this um, over the torus inside your toric variety is not very difficult. You, um, we use we, use, we show that theta functions admit similarly nice properties as in the toric monomial basis case. And over the boundary, there are some technical issues to show this. And to show that the general fiber of this double mirror is the formation equivalent to your original YDL, we show it's diffeomorphic and apply previous results of Friedman. Finally, once we have the stable mirror um, family over the toric variety by universal property, this gives us a map from the toric variety to the case B moduli space. We show that this map is finite and surjective. And I will not tell you too much about the proof, but in this finiteness, comes due to the issue of ordering or non-ordering the points you blow up in your toric model to obtain your YDL. If you blow up only one point, or if you're in a situation like in this example we were discussing where P2, where you consider P2 with a non-toric boundary, where your mirror has intersection complex this, in this example, there's only one parameter family of compact curves in this component P1 times A1. The Morifan is rather easy to describe. It's only P1, the Morifan, because you have only one nef cone and you have one divisorial contraction where you can you have one bogus cone generated by this P1 times A1. In this example, the KSB moduli space is just the moduli space corresponding to the toric variety, um, which is just P1. So it parameterizes all um, lines which vary, and generally they look like in the middle. And as in gramov witten theory, when your points tend to go to the singular point, things break up. And you can check this is the correct moduli space. Just in the last two minutes, I want to say, um, how, okay, so this proves the main thing we wanted to prove that the KSB moduli space is toric uh, up to a finite cover. But um, when we proved this, going through all this mirror symmetry describing the mirror and the non toric setup, we noticed we also answer another question uh, in physics about some quantum field theories namely 5D superconformal field theories. So in physics, mirror symmetry says that if you look at type 2B string theory on R4 times R threefold C, which was this affine conic bundle I drew, this is the same for the N equal 2 theory if you look at the type 2A string theory on R4 times the mirror to Z, which I denoted by X bar. And essentially by description of M theory, this can be described as doing M theory on R5 times this X bar. You can obtain it by compactifying this M theory along a on a circle. And um, recently, uh, there has been much progress on this question of looking at 5D superconformal field theories obtained by webs of brains. And then showing the same description can be obtained by doing M theory. So the non situation, if you look at five brains in type 2B string theory, you can describe a 5D n equal 1 superconformal field theory. And string dualities will tell you uh, there is a correct X bar. You can obtain it by doing M theory on R5 times the X bar, which is the X bar I described in the toric setup. And if you rather start with um, 
five and seven brains, you can again obtain a super conformal field theory. And in this setup, um, it was not known what the correct X bar is to get the M theory and describe this 5D super conformal field theory. And it will be the topic of Pyrrhic who will explain the semi stable mirror we construct as the correct thing. Thank you very much. So in the toric case, the secondary fan is equivalent to the Mori fan? That's true, yes. Um, this follows uh, directly, if you look at the book of Cox, the Shank toric geometry, if you read through the description of what is an F divisor in the toric setup, it just follows from the standard arguments of toric geometry. Oh, okay, so you can see like automatically how you get from a triangulation exactly. to a... Exactly, okay. it's standard torque geometry. You can directly see that, yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? So uh, let's thank uh, Julia again. Thank you.